Oh, hi guys, just a quick video because I've got a bit pissed off because I keep seeing people talking online about how you should and shouldn't vote in elections, um, about my, how you should mark the ballot paper and a variety of things like that. And I, I look, people are getting it wrong and uh, I'm not here to tell you how to vote, um, just how the system works. And I've got funny colours on me, which must be coming from the light somewhere. Um, so let me just tell you a little bit about voting. Um, I My background is I ran uh, for the first time as an independent for the Federal Senate um, just over 20 years ago and found out that the system's uh, rigged and that there's a variety of issues with the way elections are conducted. And uh, I've spent quite a lot of time in the courts trying to fight for your right to a free and informed vote. And uh, as a result of that, this year I'm involved in the Yellow Vest movement, which is to try and claw back your right to vote and uh, get rid of preferential voting and things like that. But uh, I'd like to just go over, and I'm, I'm, this is all ad hoc, so I'm not very well planned. Um, here is a ballot paper, okay? You've all seen one before. It looks a lot better than a quick texter and a piece of paper, okay? When you go in to vote, uh, at the moment, um, what's happened is this. When, you, when we started voting in this country after Federation, you used to be able to make, it was actually optional whether you voted or not. Um, so those people that uh, really took some interest in um, who was going to represent them in Parliament um, would actually go and sign off. And now back then they signed off with ID and they signed their ballot paper with a pen, okay, with ink. Because obviously it was an important document. Um, a lot of you will notice that when you go into their, into vote at the next federal election or the elections of the past, they're going to give you a pencil and they carry rubbers, okay? So the uh, a problem initiated where um, ballot papers would get filled in and then turn up and votes would be slightly different than what people thought they would be. So I suggest using a pen or a texter, um, but they've changed the law again that even if you have marked your ballot paper one, two, three, four, five. If someone crosses those out, oh, this is hard to do, crosses those out, they can put numbers along here and that ballot paper will still count. Um, in my world, in my uh, reformed electoral world, um, if you made a mistake on the ballot paper with a pen, uh, they would replace the ballot paper so to make sure that all ballot papers were precisely marked out. Now, when you go in to vote, you must mark a one, two, three, four, five, in any order of your choice for every candidate. Now that has been brought about by the two party system to make sure that somehow you have to preference them somewhere on the ballot paper. And then what they have is a two party preferred count. Now that makes sure that your vote counts for one of the major parties. In fact, in fact, if you look at this ballot paper here, who have drawn up, you'll see Labor at the bottom. So even if you went one, two, three, four, five, um, you, and, and so in other words, you preferred to have an independent, then you preferred a minor party, then you preferred Greens and so on. Labor can actually still end up with your vote in some circumstances, um, even though they're at the bottom. If you put a line through every single one and consider that a vote of no confidence, yes, your vote's worth nothing. And so if you're sick to death of the major parties down here, down this bottom section, and you just put a line through them all, then your vote won't count. And those people out there that have marked uh, ballots for those people will win. And that's what you're saying you don't want, so I would suggest you don't do it that way. Um, <clears throat> the Electoral Commission, in some cases, can guess your intention. So if you wrote one, two, three here, and left four and five blank, they can then um, do one or two things. They can toss your ballot paper out for being informal, or they can guess your intention. And if your one was for an independent, uh, what happens as a candidate, and I've been a candidate quite a few times, I have to put in a, a, a preference deal. I have to say, if people put a one in my name only and nowhere else, where will that vote go? And we do backroom deals, okay? And we get no option, it's part of the law, and the major parties do some pretty dodgy backroom deals. So you could put a one here, one, two, three, and my deal might be one, two, three, four, five, and that's how they'll count your vote, all right? It's dodgy as hell, 
But if you're going to vote, you have to fill in all of them. Now, if you follow the Yellow Vest movement, we don't want you to have to do that. We think that you should be able to go in and just go one or one, two, three. And let me explain. <clears throat> the law to do things properly still exists, okay? When you go and vote for a council, they send this out to you. And you can go, ah, rubbish, tear it up and throw it in the bin. See, I didn't tear it then. That was a good sound effect. And then... Um, if you do want to vote, you can go one, two, and your vote will count for that person first, then that person, and then will actually extinguish. In other words, you do not have to vote for all the players, okay? Then the counting system is fair. They'll work out who had the most support, uh, and that person will be elected. <clears throat> In the federal and state elections, they don't want that. They want the power to be retained by the two major parties, so they have a counting system that's a bit corrupt, and I'm going to try and explain it to you, but look, whether it's called using the uh, ballot to defeat the franchise, um, that's the legal terminology, and what actually happens is this. Um, what? <laughs> I should have, ad hoc, I should have actually thought about this a bit more. What they do is this. Let's imagine there's four people running here. So we'll take one name off. So there's four four candidates and 100 voters. So how it works out is this. Let's imagine that the outcome of the first count was 23, 24, 25, and 26 votes. In other words, people were pretty keen on all four. The person with the lowest votes is excluded from the count and their preferences will flow on to those that are left behind in the count. The problem with that is that the person with 23 primary votes may have had all the secondary votes, therefore was the most preferred. That's what they call using the, the ballot to defeat the franchise. In other words, they do not care what you want. They want to make sure that your vote goes to one of the major parties. Okay, So it's very simple. You must mark them all. If you want to have a vote of no confidence in the major parties, you put them last. Unfortunately, sadly, your vote may end up counting for them, but I can tell you one thing. If you put the minor people first, um, it'll make a hell of a difference. And if enough people did that, you'd get some independent voices in. You see, there's a problem here. Labor Party, if you vote for the Labor Party, all right, all right, what you're doing is you're voting for a candidate in your local area who is there to represent the Labor Party. If you vote for the Liberal Party, you're there for someone that's there to... Um, represent the Liberal Party, and so on. An independent, well, not necessarily, but um, some of the major parties will run fake candidates as independents to pass preferences, because this preference dealing stuff is how they keep control of your vote, and that's what we need to abolish, okay? We don't need to have to preference. It's not free, it's not informed, and it's definitely not constitutional, but they do it. That's how they do it. So, so <clears throat> you can put them last, um, and, and that would be what you call a vote of no confidence because the majors would know that you put a, prefer a first preference first for an independent. On the night of the counting and elections, they don't even look at this. They're not even interested in what you put on your ballot paper. They're interested only in being able to say, we think Labor got the most or Liberal got the most. Okay, And it's a really, really dodgy affair. Um, in fact, even if um, it was proven that the uh, major parties rigged this completely, as long as they are elected on the night or at the final count, there is no way at law in this country, the Chief Justice confirmed that in a case that I was in, fighting for your rights, that you cannot invalidate a general election regardless of the conduct of the count. Now, that's super dodgy. All right, let's go to the next ballot paper. This is the Senate ballot paper. Ah, really well done, professionally drawn with this text up. Now... For the last 40 years, 30, 40 years, if you mark a one above, you can put, they tell you you can put one above the line or fill them all in below the line, okay? And they've told you that for a long time. Now, the amount of people that fill in below the line only is less than 1%. In other words, anyone that votes that way look good on you. It was the most educated way to vote um, because you could control where your vote went exactly. But either way, generally it ended up with one of the major parties in every case. In fact, if you put Labor up here, Liberal could still get a senator in on your vote, right? That's, this, is, this is how dodgy the system's become. Now, what started happening 
was these people down here, and I was one of them, all right? Oh, sorry, let me go back a bit. Above the line, all right, you'll have Labor, Liberal, Green, so on. You have some blank boxes. Now, the blank boxes represent independence. In other words, if I run as an independent, I'm stuck down here. If I run with a friend or my wife, which I did once, I'm allowed, I'm called a grouped independent. So I'm allowed to have a box up here, but I'm not allowed to have my name in it. So when you go to vote and you see boxes with no indication of who the person is, it's generally an independent because they don't want independence in the Senate because the Senate is the House of Review. So this mob here make up Parliament, lower house. This mob here decide whether what Parliament's doing is right or wrong. So it's pretty important to have a bit of a, a blend or a good mix of people in this particular section here. Now, um, what they then did was this lot here got together and started trying to work together to try and get a, a, at least one or two independent voices in the Senate in each state so that the whichever party got in, so if Labor got in on this one or Liberal, which doesn't make any difference, country goes same direction, same shitty place, they sell your stuff still, they do all the bad things that have been happening to you for 30 years, but they rule the country. This mob here can say yay or nay to legislation they try changing, to try passing, and generally legislation they try passing is to empower the big boys or take away your rights and liberties or attack democracy or whatever it is. You know, it's not necessarily very good things for the country. Um, and so this lot got together down here and preferenced each other. So if you voted for one miner and he didn't get it, he'd give it to another miner or an independent. And that's what we were meant to be doing. A lot of dodgy stuff happened. People made promises and broke them. I mean, the whole concept of preferential voting is just uh, empowering dodgy backroom deals, but that's what we've started doing. And the problem is we got a couple in, you see, and uh, they didn't like that. So now you only have to vote, you can vote above line or below the line, but you don't have to fill them all in. You can you only have to vote for as many seats as is, is available. In South Australia, that's 11, if my memory serves it correctly. So down here, you can go one to 11. In other words, for the first time in history, you can actually exclude the major parties from your preferencing. Now they did that because they know no one's gonna vote down the bottom and they figured that will cut us out of doing deals, but it actually empowers you just that little bit. They've done it to empower themselves, we can use it to empower ourselves. So you can now mark the amount of ballots down here you like, but only the number of senators. So you, you might even wanna put 15 out of 30 or 40 out of, uh, of 55. There's usually a lot of names on this ballot paper. Sadly, in both cases, if there's an independent, or a whole lot of minor parties or independents, you won't know who they are, and that's the biggest issue with, with democracy. Uh, there is one system of democracy that still exists in, in Australia that's half reasonable, and it's the voting at council elections. You see, councils don't exist under the constitution correctly. They're actually an incorporation empowered by the state parliaments, and really, no one really cares too much about them. So the electoral law at councils is very much what this used to be. Um, so it, when you go to a council election, you can go, no, nah, I don't want it. And you can go, I'm not going to vote. They're rubbish. Nick off. Or you can vote for one, two or three, and your vote only counts for those. So if we want to change electoral law in this country, it's already in place. The Electoral Commission runs them. They could run an election. At the next federal election, they could run a system exactly the same as councils. In other words, allowing you the true, true free choice, sending you out a booklet that's got the names of the people running so you can go, oh, look, I know that bloke, he's a dick, or I like that lady, she's fantastic. It would normally have a little spiel about that person. It would have a link to their website so you can go and have a look. And you had the opportunity to cast a free and informed vote. And that's what the Yellow Vest Movement is about, trying to empower your free and informed vote. Now, there's a few other things they do, you see. Rigging this lot wasn't enough, okay? So they do dodgy shit. And I think you need to know about the dodgy shit now. Now, they have played with electoral rolls. So if you care about voting, ring up today and check you're on the electoral roll. Each year, tens and hundreds of thousands of names go missing off that roll. And there are lots of inclusions of people that shouldn't be able to vote, dead people and all sorts. So very, very dodgy. If you want to empower yourself, ring up, make sure you're enrolled to vote if you're actually going to be bothered doing this, okay? If you forget to vote, okay, and I'll chuck this in. If you forget to vote, you can get fined. This mob, the AEC, run this shit so badly, they wouldn't even know if you turned up or not. So if you forget to vote, 
write to them and say, I did vote. I went to such and such and voted, okay? They can't find you because they have no bloody idea. The thing is run so poorly, they wouldn't even know. Postal ballots. Now, postal ballots were available for people that were sick, okay? That couldn't make it into it. But nowadays, they're promoted, okay? So when you receive a letter in the letterbox that says, um, would you like to postal vote, okay? Let me give you a bit of advice. That postal ballot application is most probably not from the Electoral Commission. It's probably from one of the major parties wanting to get hold of your, your information or your ballot paper. And be very, very cautious. It'll have a reply paid address. In fact, the Labor Party have been known in South Australia to register the opposition leaders' names as PO box addresses to intercept mail that you think you're sending to one party or the other. So do not accept a postal ballot application or postal ballot from anyone but the Australian Electoral Commission. Ring them up and have it come from them and make you sure you send it back to them because these blokes want to win, okay? They want to maintain power. They're not interested in, in you getting a free and informed vote. They want your vote and they will steal and take it and do anything else they can to get your vote. So if you're going to vote by post, make sure you mail in. Pencil, I've covered that. Use the bloody pen. Preferences, all sorts of dodgy crap goes on. Do not look at the how to vote guides. You're standing in, a ballot, in, in the polling booth and people are giving you bits of paper telling you this is how you vote for Labor. No, it's not. Labor is one tick of the pen. You do not have to do something in some certain order to support Labor. That is indicative of some backroom deal they've done. And it's not relevant to democracy. It's not relevant to your vote or the importance of your vote. Um, on top of that note, they sometimes you'll get, in this state, I know it's happened, Labor dressed up, or could have been Liberal, doesn't really matter, we're all the same, as another political party, and gave out how to vote cards pretending to be that political party to steal your preferences. Do not look at the how to vote cards. Throw them in the bin. If you arrive and you're not sure, um, ask for help or advice, or at least, if you care a shit about your country, spend a few minutes looking at who's running and work out how you're going to vote. That's why... Um, the council system's better because it comes in your house, you can sit and, and, and take some time rather than turning up a polling booth. So fake how. Now, major parties will lie to you. They have changed the electoral law to make it legal to lie to you. So they would lie to you. when you. But they'll tell you, oh, we're going to give you all a million dollars each if you vote for us. They are never going to give you a million dollars. They will say, we will stop the votes or we will do this or we will do that. They do not have to honour those prior promises. Another thing the Yellow Vest is all about is to make sure that they make a bloody promise, they've got to keep it. If they don't, we can sack them. Okay, that's the Yellow Vest movement. Right now, they can lie to you, and they will, and they have lied to you every single year for 40 years. Okay, and what you should do, what you should do when you vote is go, Labor lied to me, you know, Liberal lied to me, I'm putting them last. But you generally, unfortunately, you don't do that. Um, dressing up, I've covered that. Wasted votes. The biggest propaganda ever is that voting for an independent or a minor party is a wasted vote. Who do you think tells you that? Labor and Liberal, because they don't want you to vote for somebody else, okay? They do not want to have to negotiate with anybody. They are told by the people that fund them what they, what, what they should do in respect to the direction of this country, okay? They don't care about you. Come election time, they hire someone to tell them what they think you want to hear, then they'll tell you that even if they have no interest in providing it to get your vote. They want your vote and they want to do what the hell they want with this country. If you vote, vote for either of the majors, right, either of the major parties, the direction of your country will not change. It will not change. They will continue to sell assets. They'll continue to, to, to stop, not build dams. They'll continue to run our health care into the ground and a million other things that you all know are wrong because they don't give a shit for you, they don't give a shit for your country. Someone else is pulling their strings. We know it, I know it, you know it. Maybe start telling your friends, because that's what happens. So, there's voting for you in a, in a well, shit, 20 minutes. Um, the system is gamed, it's rigged. It's rigged to take away your free choice, your democratic rights, okay? You cannot do a single thing about it. You can either stand with the yellow vest in massive numbers and try and claw back our right to a free and informed vote. If you're not gonna do that, this is how the system works, okay? The best opportunity you have is to take some pride in this pissy piece of paper, which is all you've got. That is all they give you, okay? And at the end of the election, they'll, they'll one of them will be elected and they'll do what the hell they like. What they do not want is independent 
voices, independent people. They don't want united people that stand together. And what they want to do is mislead you um, constantly. And you'll see that. You'll get told to do this voting or that voting or here's the ballot paper, send it back to me. Um, we have in several elections found in every election for the 30, last 30 years that more votes and ballot papers go missing than the winning margins of any election. In other words, the dodgy outweighs the winning margins. We need to stop that dodgy. So now you know some of the things they do, make sure you're more informed and you, you, you take more uh, a better approach to this. And you've got to remember, the parties rigging the election, the parties that will lie to you and cheat to you and rip you off and undermine your rights and everything that we know they do are the major two parties, okay? And the Greens uh, will run in every seat across the country. They know they're not going to win any of those seats. It is to pass a preference to Labor. The Nationals won't get many either, and they will pass a preference down. And some of the independents, which you've never heard of and don't say anything, they're just on the ballot paper, they're not out there and about trying to meet you, some of them could even be dodgy, okay? We've seen that before. Not very often, but we have seen that before. So... The people that are willing to rig an election, right, and then run around um, calling themselves fucking honourable, excuse the language, honourable, fuck, after rigging an election, they're the people that write the rules. That is Labor and Liberal and their cohorts, okay? So really, if you want a vote of no confidence in the, in the political system, you definitely don't put them first. You put anybody first. I mean, anybody getting in is going to do a better job than this lot. A trained monkey flipping a coin heads or tails will get it right more often than the Labor and Liberal Party, if you want my opinion. But my opinion is not to tell you how to vote. It's telling you some of the tricks to voting properly. And I hope you really care for it. And I'll continue to fight, as I have for 20 years, to restore your right to a free informed vote. And while we're there, we could probably put some a Bill of Rights in there and a, and a heap of other things which Yellow Vests are going for to try and empower not just you, but your family, your children and everybody else in this country. This is not an Australian problem. This is a worldwide problem. You can go to any country anywhere in the world and the exact same thing happens. And you can't do much about it. You can either stand united with your fellow Australians and ask for this to be changed, or you can just take a little bit more care in how you vote. Um, either way, best of luck. Hope you learned something.